Hello everybody, Dark Ninja here, and today I'm going to be talking about World of Tanks 15-0 slash blowout simulator battles and how I would fix them. <clears throat> I'm going to be running a replay in the background in my Jagdpanzer 100 where I encountered one of these uh, blowout games just a couple days ago, and in my experience, these battles are a huge problem in World of Tanks and one of the primary um, issues with the game currently. In fact, one of, it's one of the most complained about topics that I've seen in the World of Tanks official YouTube channel's comment section, right up there with nerfing the BZ-176 and complaining about gold ammo. Like, it's a huge problem, and people are very upset about this, uh, in my experience, from what I've seen um, from people's comments. People encounter a constant stream of 15-0 or 15-3 games uh, that last 4 or 5 minutes. They're complete blowouts, and they just aren't very fun to play, to be honest. Um, not only for the losing team, who just have no chance of winning, but also for the winners, who have to race against each other to do as much damage as possible before the battle inev inevitably ends rapidly. Um, and those kind of games are very uninteresting as well. In my opinion, there are many factors that Wargaming could do to influence um, and reduce the rate of steamrolls and to make the games last longer. And in my opinion, this problem shouldn't be addressed with a one-size-all, uh, one-size-fits-all solution. I think this problem has many factors, um, and I don't think the problem will be that easy to fix that you can just change one thing and then suddenly everything will be fine. But with all that being said, in this video, I'm going to look at one particular solution, which I think would have a great deal of um, impact on this particular problem. So my proposed solution is skilled-based matchmaking, um, which I think would be a great way to ensure that the teams are far more evenly balanced, and I think it would reduce the number of steamrolls. Now, I need to be very clear when I say skill-based matchmaking. I don't mean that all 55% win rate players should be matched together in their own queue and that all the 45% tomatoes should be in their own queue and they should only face um, players of, their, of similar skill level. That's not what I mean at all by skill-based matching matchmaking. Instead, what I'm talking about is matchmaking that takes into account the overall skill of each team as a whole and matchmaking which tries to ensure that the teams are relatively evenly matched. Um, so I think one simplified way to think about what I'm proposing is that if Matchmaker were to match um, each 45% player in the queue with other 45%ers and 55% players with 55% players, or for example, two 55% players um, get put onto one team to even out um, a 60% win rate player on the opposing team, for example, um, but still allowing all players of all skill levels to be in the same queue and get into the same battles. There are many metrics that Matchmaker could use to determine the rough skill level of players and their predicted impact on the battle, despite what many people believe. Uh, so I think there are some people who are a little bit conspiratorial in my eyes, and that they believe that win rate is just RNG and that their skill level has nothing to do with it, but um, I completely disagree with that. And I think that's also the case for, for, for example, damage per game and many other metrics. I do think that skill can absolutely be measured. Um, and that, for example, win 8 is somewhat useful tool to measure someone's skill. Of course, it can be uh, manipulated heavily. And it's not perfect by any means. By the way, just looking at the battle. Uh, yeah, 15 to 0. My team is up 15,000 HP. I had to just drive in basically most of the battle just to try to get to the enemies in time before they were killed not fun at all to play uh very unexciting uh wasn't a close close game where i had to try to carry or anything like like that and i didn't feel like my impact i feel i felt like i had no impact on the outcome of this battle i was just kind of a participant and kind of just there uh so not fun but yeah getting back to my point uh when eight is not perfect by any means <clears throat> and metrics of skill are never going to be completely perfect um, representations of what the true skill level of players. Um, but metrics up, such as win 8, I still believe, are fairly highly correlated with skill level and your personal win rate, and more importantly, with your predicted impact on any given battle. 
And therefore, due to that fact, those metrics can therefore be used as a rough measure of how to balance out teams in order to make battles more fair, thus reducing the number of blowouts and steamrolls, and increasing the number of long engaging battles, unlike this one, where you feel like you have a contribution or your contribution has a much greater effect on whether your team wins or loses the game. Uh, those are the most exciting games to play, in my opinion, which are close games. Now, this whole proposal is predicated on the fact that teams can be balanced fairly based on a measurement of someone's skill level using certain metrics. And I'm sure there are many of, many of you who are listening who might be skeptical. Not only that skill can be measured in a simple way, but also that even if you could measure skill in a simple way, the games are just far too random for it to make a difference, and that balancing teams based on skill would not have any meaningful impact on making games closer or reducing steamrolls. And so in the next portion of the video, I'm going to showcase what I believe to be strong evidence, which addresses both of those concerns. Okay, so now the only the way that I know that this method probably would work is partly because part of my proposed solution has already been shown to work, namely the ability to predict the outcome of games based on each team's skill level, which was determined using skill based metrics. Someone has already done that and that the people who have done that are the, the members of XVM who developed the mod. So I'm sure many of you know what XGM is um, and I've heard about XGM's win chance, which is an optional setting in the mod to show you your team's chance of winning a certain battle. So for example, in this uh, example, uh, this player in the Chihi is in a battle and his team looks kind of stacked compared to the enemy team. The enemy team is like all reds. They have some green players and some yellow players. And XGM is telling uh, this player that they have a... 94% chance to win this battle um, because of the difference in skill. Now, many XVM users, especially when it was popular, more popular in the past, abused this predicted win chance um, option to complain about their team, to drown themselves, and to give up instantly at the start of the battle when they saw that their prediction um, for their team's uh, chance to victory was very low um, and that and XGM was predicting them to lose. So players would see XGM predicting a 30% win chance for their team and then they would just go draw themselves. And of course, uh, I do not condone that whatsoever. I think that's really bad. Um, but I think that some people go too far um, when they see that and they get mad at XGM and then they start to say things like the XGM win chance is just a meaningless number and it isn't accurate or something to that effect. Now, while I agree with the sentiment of what people are saying that you should never give up just because XGM told you that your team is going to lose. I completely agree with that. I still disagree that that number is just meaningless and then it doesn't say anything about your chances to win because it definitely does. And I have the data to back that up. Um, <clears throat> so for, next, let's go over the uh, data, which uh, I say is very strong evidence that this number actually does mean something and that Wargaming could develop a similar similar number, not to display um, in game, in, in your games, but just in for their matchmaker system to try to determine whether the teams are fair or not. So in researching for this video and determining whether or not my solution would actually work, <clears throat> I came across this, uh, this post on Watt News. Um, it's a post asking just how accurate is the XGM win percent chance. And so this individual, Silent Stalker, did a 1,000 battle study on the XGM win percent chance and whether it was accurate or not. And what they found was that by and large, it was somewhat accurate, but that it was not completely accurate. And so you might be thinking, okay, so it wasn't completely accurate. It must not have done a good job at pre predicting wins and losses. And yes, it didn't predict wins and losses well but not in the way that you might think. And what we actually see, um, looking at the red versus the green in this graph, is uh, that XVM was not accurate in the sense that it didn't um, predict correctly the outcome of the battle well 
in the extremes. So for example, at 50% win rate, uh, here we have another graph, XJM win, win chance prediction versus the actual win rate. At 50% win rate prediction, it's pretty accurate. So the actual win rate was equal to the predicted um, win rate by XVM. But then you look at the tails, uh, let's say it predicted 65% chance that you're going to win the win this battle. The actual victory rate was 85%. So XVM was actually not extreme enough in uh, predicting uh, predicting uh, the outcomes of battles, meaning that if the, a team had just like a small advantage enough for XVM to say it has a 65% chance of winning, they would actually win 85% of those games. And so what you see is in these extremes of battles, uh, all over here and all over here on this side, uh, there was actually a lot of battles where teams in reality, based on skill, only had, you know, a 15% chance to win the battle, which is kind of sad. And uh, I don't think those kind of battles would be very enjoyable. You know, you're probably, it's just one team steamrolling the other. Uh, and XGM, instead of XGM's kind of assumption in its calculations that battles are relatively fair and that uh, predictions of win chance, you know, would go from maybe 60 to 60 or 65% down to 40% or 35%. There were a lot of battles that there was only like, you know, a 25 or 20% chance to win. Uh, that's basically the takeaway from, from this post. Um, you know, rig pretty rigorous statistics, as far as I can tell, you know, I'm not a statistician, but so basically what, what I can conclude from this is that you can actually predict the outcome of a battle on average, of course, not individual battles based on metrics, which XVM, for example, are using. I don't know exactly which metrics they're using, but I assume it's, you know, damage per game, average win rate. Uh, stuff like that in order to predict the outcome of a battle. And so what this means is you can use those metrics to, per to for example, assign a different players what I would like to call an impact score. So their impacts on the battle on average, uh, whether that be positive or negative. I will link this article in the description, for example, but even on this in this article there's comments on it and you know you look at the you look at the first first uh message in the comments and it says so as i said and i will always say don't look at the gosh darn win chances they mean nothing which i mean that's the exact opposite of what this article just said people believe this regardless of the evidence which really confuses me first of all um but yeah, my guess is it's just because people don't like the fact that people will be use XVM to drown themselves, which I mean, that's fair, but you shouldn't just lie about, you know, reality, in my opinion. Uh, but anyways, in effect, what could be done with this is Wargaming themselves come up with a way of, of measuring uh, player skill or player impact and then put that measure into their matchmaker and using data and analytics uh, make their own prediction score for how well certain teams are going to do and then try to balance the teams based on that those impact scores so this article was written back in 2015 you know nine years ago I know for a fact that Wargaming definitely has better analytics since then and better tools to um, come up with this kind of uh, this kind of system. And if XVM, just a mod producer, could do this back in 2015, I know for a fact that Wargaming could definitely do this in 2024. So I'm not saying that, um, I'm assuming that Win8 might have been, or whatever, efficiency score, whatever was the metric of choice back then is part of what XGM used in their uh, their skill metric. I'm not saying that, that Wargaming has to use that as their metric. They could use anything that they find is accurate. You know, DPG, uh, average assist, win rate, all those kinds of things. 
and then they implement it into their matchmaker. So what are some problems with this solution? Um, because I do think there are some legitimate problems that could be introduced if you were to implement this into the matchmaker. And I think there's two main problems. One is that it's just really difficult to implement into the matchmaker. Um, because I know for, I know based on Wargaming videos that the matchmaker is very complicated. And there are so many variables that the matchmaker has to has to uh, put together, like the format of the teams, like you know, the, like three tier nines, whatever, five tier eights, etc. And then it also has to take into account um, the tiers of the tanks. It has to take into account the classification of the tanks. It has to deal with you know EBRs or masters e against EBRs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so adding an extra significant variable. Um, such as um, player skill would be very complicated. However, I think because this issue is so extremely important, in my opinion, to the enjoyability of the game, um, it's one of the biggest issues that this game currently has, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, steamrolls need to be addressed. I think that putting in a large amount of effort to fix the matchmaking is definitely worth the time and the effort. Now, the second big problem and this is probably the most important problem that i could see um in adding this kind of system would be the queue times so adding an extra variable is not only complex um but you know it's going to make queue times longer and i think i have some ideas on how you could negate or reduce this as a problem so some ideas i had are to make it so that the skill-based matchmaking component of the matchmaker is only active during prime time hours, for example, or when the server or queue population is above a certain threshold. And I think that if you were to do this, people would be more than willing. I mean, I don't want to speak for everybody, so please let me know in the comments, but I think most people would be willing to wait an extra 20 seconds or 30 seconds in the queue um, during prime time hours if it meant that you could be getting high quality battles another another couple um solutions to this queue problem queue time problem is to make it so it's selectively active only for battles that involve tier 8 plus vehicles since those are the most popularly played tiers um and if you wanted to make the matchmaking for skill based matchmaking even less restricted you could also just focus on balancing the skill level of the top tiered tanks in in battles that involve several tiers of tanks rather than the whole team. So in battles with, you know, five tier tens and uh, ten tier nines on each team, you could just balance the skill level of the tier tens, and I think that would even just that would go a long way because obviously the tier tens are going to have a bigger impact on the outcome of the battle than the tier nines. So it's most important that those players are um balanced based on skill and uh there's something to be said of you know triple platoons of of 55 percent plus win rate players um in tier 10 heavy tanks getting into tier 9 games it would really help if you know a couple other good players in their tier 10 tanks were just thrown on the other team just to you know slow them down and stop them and prevent the inevitable role that's going to happen 80 or 90 percent of games um so yeah, that's pretty much all I've got for this video. Um, please let me know what you think about this solution in the comment. Do you think it would help? Do you think it's a little bit far-fetched? Do you see any other problems that I missed with this solution? Do you think Wargaming is even going to, you know, consider something like this? <clears throat> and if you have any other ideas on how to stop steamrolls in World Tanks, like actual actionable things that Wargaming can do, I know that there are a lot of, like a lot, a lot of, different things I can think of outside of this that they could also do. Please let me know about those in the comments as well. Thank you for watching. Please uh, subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video. Um, share it with your clanmates um, if you think that they would be interested in a topic such as this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.